There's nothing like the waft of freshly baked gingerbread in the house when it comes to Christmas. And today I'm going to show you how to make the perfect gingerbread guided by science. First thing to do is to sieve our dry ingredients into the bowl. So we've got 275 grams here of plain flour. Well, next is to add the all important spices. Now you can play around with these however you see fit. I've got one and a half teaspoons of all three of these. So start off with the ginger. I just absolutely love the, the taste of ginger. Cinnamon is next and then mixed spice. And then after the spices, now adding some bicarbonate of soda, which is going to act as a raising agent in our biscuit. Now, not every recipe, gingerbread recipe, is going to call for that, but I like it because it just gives it a slight aeration, a bit better structure to our biscuit. We can just sieve those now into our bowl. I've got a whisk here just to sort of mix those all in so they're nicely mixed. They smell amazing. That's perfect. So we've got all those nicely mixed. We're now going to add in our fat, which is our butter. Now it's really key that we do this bit now because in our flour, the flour proteins, which is gluten and gliadin, when they get hydrated with water, they'll then start to interact, come together, and they'll form the, the sort of the gluten network that we would have if we start working the mixture. We can coat these proteins um, in a layer of this fat, and it just sort of means that they don't quite take in as much water, and they don't hydrate quite as easily, which means that we can therefore work the dough, we can bring it all together, and we don't develop too much gluten in our dough, which is really key because we want to have a lovely, nice, short, crumbly biscuit. So we're going to add our butter into here and we're just going to rub it in with our fingertips. Whenever I'm making anything like biscuits or pastry, I love to just do it using my hands. It's nicer, but also you've got a lot more control. You don't overwork your dough, whereas you could have a risk of doing so if you were to do it in a mixer. But you're going to end up with a mixture that resembles almost like fine breadcrumbs at the end. All nicely rubbed in. If you just give it a little shake, it should come to the surface, you get little bits that form with sort of clumped together. We should be able to pick those up and they'll just crumble. But there's no chunks of butter in there, it's just really nice and light. And we're going to add in the sugars. So I've actually got a mixture here of caster sugar and light brown soft sugar, 50 grams of each. So we're going to put that in there and that in there. So we'll just bring that all together. The brown sugar has got that molassesy taste to it and it helps it gives a lovely structure and sweetness to our bake. Brown sugar also happens to have a slight acidity to it, so our bicarbonate soda is an alkaline. It can react with the slight acidity from our um, brown sugar and so that's going to help create that, those carbon dioxide bubbles to help give us a little rise to our biscuit. But we're also going to get the most of that sort of rise is going to be coming from the heat of the ovens. So we've got thermal decomposition in the oven. It's going to create carbon dioxide bubbles, water vapour, and that's going to help give us the little bubbles and the structure in our bake as it rises. So we've got our mixture here. The next bit now is to add in these wet ingredients. Some recipes may not have an egg in there. I quite like using it. Just get, it binds together really nicely, gives it a little bit of richness, helps with the to give it a lovely colour at the end as well. We've got one medium egg here. We have got 60 grams here of golden syrup. And then we've got the same again of black treacle. We can begin to bring all this together. I use a spatula first, just so that I don't get my hands completely covered in everything. So this will just help to start things off. Now it's time to, to get messy and get your hands in there to bring this together very lightly. And it can look a bit dry actually at the, st at the start. You can see there, it's a bit of flour. But honestly, this is, it's really quite a soft dough once it's all formed, so just bear with it. And the reason why it actually gets a bit soft is because it is, it's absorbing still, the flour is still absorbing some more of the moisture, which is why it's quite key for us then to go and chill it. So that's all coming together. And it should, hopefully, leave your bowl clean at the end. I'm just gonna very, very lightly now just make sure this is all mixed together really nicely. Make sure we've got no bits of butter, no pockets of flour, no nothing into there. And you can see there now, look, just 10, 15 seconds, you see we've got one lovely ball now. So we're gonna now put this into some cling film, like so, and then we can pop this into the fridge. Our dough has now chilled in the fridge for about half an hour or so. And now we're going to roll it out onto a floured surface. So that's nice and thin. So we're going for around about a pound thickness or sort of like just about five, seven millimetres at tops. So I've got my cutter. We'll start there. Just lift that up there, just pop that out. There we go, wonderful. We'll chill this in the fridge 
and by just chilling it first it just makes sure that it's going to have it's been nice and firm and it will keep that shape in the oven it's a bit too warm when it goes into the heat of the oven the butter can just melt a little bit and it just loses that structure and lo just loses that definition and then whilst i do that i'll turn the oven on and then we can get them in We're fresh from the oven and we're here is our gingerbread. The smell in here now is incredible. They've got such a beautiful golden colour to them. They've kept their shape as well. The chilling stage that we did with our, our dough before it went into the oven, that was really, really critical. And yeah, they look really wonderful. And it's really important that we give them a golden colour because colour means flavour. So you want to be able to have that wonderful caramelised, not quite burnt, but really nice toasty notes to it. But also when we're in the oven, there's lots of chemical reactions that's going on. So the, the ginger oil that's in our ginger, it can get, it gets transformed into other flavour compounds in the heat of the oven. So it undergoes a reverse aldol reaction and creates zingarone, but it can also undergo some dehydration reactions and create um, some shogols. And these shogols actually are even more pungent than ginger oil itself. And so now we can move these gingerbreads onto a cooling rack now. And then once cooled, we can then move on to the decoration. Here's some that I've already been decorating with. So I've done a selection of different designs here. All of these ones are using royal icing. And I love using that because it uses egg white in the mixture, but it just helps give the icing a really good sort of structure to it. It makes it so that it, it pipes really, really well. It holds its shape really well and sets. So it would be remiss of me not to bring some chemistry into the decoration as well. So here we've got candy canes spelt out using chemical elements. We've got calcium, neodymium, yttrium, uh, nitrogen and Einsteinium there. And then in a similar fashion, we've got this one here, which I have piped on snowflakes. So we've got tin, oxygen, tungsten, fluorine, lanthanum, potassium and Einsteinium. And it really is my favourite biscuit. And then finally, I've got this one here and I've spelled out Happy Christmas. Now I can't quite spell this one as accurately as the other ones because the chemical elements don't allow it and there's no way I'm going to start mi mi making up some new ones. I have to be accurate. So here we go, we've just got a couple of, a couple of letters missing, but the best part of these is the fact that the bubbles have got homium, chemical element HO in there, so they spell out ho ho ho. So I've shown you how to make the gingerbread, now it's your turn to have a go at home. These are such a great recipe to do at home and get everybody involved. You can get as creative as you want. I've added my chemistry influence onto these ones. If you can do that yourself, please do. I'd love to see some of those designs. Make them festive and yeah, get everybody involved doing all the decorating because it is really great fun to all sit there piping your own biscuit.